Hey guys, how are we doing today? Uh, I was recently up in the woods, John and I were, and there is this, um, we were actually up because it's hunting season here, and we were, there's this tree like I like to go to, we usually kind of park somewhat near it, and it's way up in the mountains, and it's just an apple tree that's growing out there. I'm sure at some point a bird had dumped something <laughs> and up came the tree. Uh, so every year, if possible, I try to collect some of the apples that are either fresh on the ground or if we give it a little shake, whatever falls down. Uh, the back side of it's off a steep bankment, so it'd be impossible to reach the one side, but we try to get what we can from the front. So anyway, we got these apples and um, I was going to make some uh, homemade apple cider vinegar and I thought I would bring you along with. Now there's this weird misconception that you can't use bad apples um, or ugly apples or whatever you want to call them when you're making homemade apple cider vinegar and that could not be any further from the truth. Actually, I would only probably use these or if I had good apples, I probably would be using like the cores or even um, the um, skins of them. But bad apples are just as fine to use. Uh, good apples, I would rather save them for applesauce or apple bars or apple butter or whatever, you know, apple pie. So don't be afraid to use the bad apples that fall on the ground. Now the only thing that I do look for, and um, it's something that, you know, if you're getting them off the ground, you probably should be looking for, and that's possibly a little worm. Uh, I unfortunately don't really care to have worm in my apples. So that's the one thing that I would watch out for. Other than that, now this particular apple did have a worm hole and it left kind of behind some of its little worm poop. So I'm not going to use that one. I will cut out the area around it, but other than that, I'm going to keep using it. Oh, I got a live one still here. So again, just like uh, <laughs> when you get them in the store, they, they have this uh, coating on them and it's not good for you. So I'd rather get my apples from somewhere that is a little better. Now I don't mind taking out all this little worm casing and such because it's going to go right to my chickens. So I have my little chicken bucket here and those worms my chickens are going to love so uh, kudos for me and a treat for them. Okay, so boy these are really eaten up by worms. So really you're just going to fill a gallon jar uh, with your casings. Or your, gosh, cut that shit out because that was ridiculous. So you are going to just need to fill a, a gallon jar. I have these mason jar gallon jars. I love them. I typically, I have like my flours and sugars and oats and whatnot in them, but I also have some extras and they work really good for making fire cider or making apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to continue to fill this up. Seeds are fine. You're going to strain it later. So, mm. 
unfortunately the one downside to getting a bunch of them off the ground is a lot of times they have worms in them I personally really just don't care I can cut that out in fact I've had to do it to most of these because most of these I did get off the ground and that's okay maybe you know of a uh, a farmer or somebody on your road or a farm somewhere you know you, there's people that have apple trees and they fall on the ground and they just kind of let them rot well versus letting them rot you could take them and use them for cider I mean this cider vinegar it's really not actually I think that's okay it's really not um, anything you have to be particular on you're just taking them and you're filling it and that is the main purpose when this is all said and done you will have the opportunity to strain it really good and that is when you'll get out all that sediment and um, gooky stuff that obviously you're not going to want to have in your apple cider. Apple cider vinegar is good for so many things. It's good for your nutrition. It's good for obviously canning. Um, it's good for your hair. Oh, I got a live one there. Go ahead and give him the rest of his body back. It's good for your hair. And you can use it for so many things. Now this one here, that's pretty sketchy. I cannot tell if there is a, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of worm cocoon in there. I can do without that. I'm not being, it's nice because you can be flexible on your pickiness. I mean, I literally just have a little shopping bag here. And if I throw out a lot, then I throw out a lot. I don't care. And as you can see, I've just about got this bad boy filled. Now, I will say that when you're um, all said and done, you're going to be adding a cup of sugar to one gallon. If by chance, <coughs> shh, shh, shh. if by chance you're using a smaller container, uh, it's basically adding one tablespoon of sugar per cup of water. But we are going to be using a whole cup today. And I think we are just about done here. You can definitely tell the ones I got from the tree. Poor John, I should have got a video of that. You all would have laughed. <laughs> he was such a good sport helping me get my apples this year. Okay, so I am going to get my cup of sugar in here. Let me clean up my mess. Chickens happy. So I'm going to go ahead and add it straight to my apples. And 
and it's filtering through. way down. So now we're going to add our water um, and we're going to have to make sure it's filled really full. Okay, there we go. I cannot pour and spill. I can't honestly be in the kitchen and not make a mess. This is why I have to wear aprons literally every time I'm in here. Let's try again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm like not capable. There's gotta be a trick to this. If somebody knows why I can't pour, I can't pour out of a gallon jug, can't pour out of a measuring cup, I can't even pour out of a coffee pot. Ugh. I definitely would have never made it as like a lab scientist. Okay, I'm gonna try tipping a little. <sighs> Pour fast. Okay, besides my ultimate mess. <laughs> All right. Now it should be noted when you're making this, you can't use regular tap water uh, unless you're on a well. It does need to be either some kind of spring water, filter water, uh, something, something from a bottle or a spring, or you can't just use chlorinated water. So I've now got the goods started. And here's a little trick. If you add to this a shot of another batch, then this will help kickstart this. Okay, so as you can see, we have it pretty full here. Of squishing things around. I'm not so worried about shaking it right this moment, but I've got air bubbles coming up on the side. I'm letting it kind of work its way in for a moment. Squishing things around. Okay. So if you have an old jar, save it so that you're not having to pour directly out of here. So I've had this old jar. You can definitely tell it's got the mother in it. Um, so this is what you want. And this is what's gonna help kickstart your next batch. Now, if you don't have uh, an old jar or some laying around, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It'll still get to the point it needs to be. It just will take a little longer. So I'm gonna give this a little nice shaky dakey. Add that in. And I'm gonna put my lid on it. Now, I'm not keeping this lid on because it does need to breathe, um, but I'm gonna do that for shaking purposes. Because as you can see, all the way down, we've got our sugar on the bottom. So now the sediment is running down all the way to the lid. And I will just take it back and forth a bit so I can make sure it's getting well mixed. Okay guys, so I've got this pretty well mixed up, but I'm gonna be shaking this and stirring it just about every day for two weeks. But I'm not gonna leave the lid on because the gases will need to escape. So what I'm gonna do is simply take it off and I need to get everything pushed back down in there. 
Now I don't use a cheesecloth. I've seen videos where people are doing that, but in my house, gnats get underneath them. So I just, I really don't recommend that. I'm just gonna use an old breathable wash rag, make sure it's clean and put a rubber band around it. And then just store those um, in a cool place. And for the first two weeks, like I said, you're just gonna need to stir it with a wooden spoon every day. If you forget a day, it's not the end of the world. And then um, the longer it sits, the better, but typically four to six weeks and you'll be good. And then you can go ahead and strain off the apples and then you'll have just the liquid. From that point on, the longer it sits, the better it gets. So if you can get it to set for even like three or four months or even longer, the better off you will be. But you can technically use it after about six weeks. Uh, this will just need to stay, you know, in a cool, dark place so that it can do its job. You can sit it on the counter if you need to. Just you don't want direct sunlight coming in on it. And for me, the pantry just seems a little better place. Once you strain it, obviously you're not going to have as much as you have in the, the gallon jar. But that's when having old containers to put it in uh, is a really great option. Or um, if you need to, you can use a, a smaller uh, canning jar to store them in. And that's all there is to it. It's super, super simple. There's really, it's just not hard. I, I know a lot of people think it is. And I was doing a video not very long ago and I did not have enough. Well, I thought I was actually out of this. I couldn't find it. So I had to run to the store and the generic this stuff has gone up. It's like gold. Uh, I think these used to be, you know, like 99 cents. The generic jug was $5.99 for generic. The, I think like the Heinz or whatever it is, um, that one was eight something. I don't remember exactly, but that's just too much money when you can simply get apples off the ground and have the same product, but better. So anyway, guys, hopefully this video wasn't um, too gross for you with the little worms. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you too will get some apple cider vinegar to enjoy for all your purposes. Have a really great rest of your day.